So our studio rack is finished. I did a video the other day about how this ties into our virtual lab, which I can link below. But I've done a review on this particular rack before, but not built as this. So this is a StarTech open post rack, adjustable. I'll link also to the video where I do a specific review of this rack. We like it. It's great for if you're building a home lab, uh, for some of the small offices we put them in. It's handy. It's on wheels. It rolls around. It's you know quite sturdy. Now, the next thing we did in this that's a little bit different, this wasn't in the review, but uh, you can go over to Lowe's, Home Depot, or whatever hardware store you want uh, that can cut the wood for you if you don't have the tools to do so. And we threw a board and just painted it black on top. And I uh, got some flush mount screws here. This adds some stability to it, because I want to admit, this is not something it comes with, uh, but it adds a little stability and an easy place to set your monitor. Or in this case, we stuck the Synology up here. Uh, so it's the only real, non-stock add-on we have for the rack. Other than that, it's just, you know, standard rack build. And this has got adjustable depth on it. And I go in and talk about that in that video. Now, next thing down, we did a ADJ PC100A rack mount, you know, 19 inch wide power switch. Now these are handy because, you know, you want to be able to turn individual things on and off. I like the way everything lights up on it. Actually, I think I have, that probably turned out at least one of my lights. Let me think, yep. I have one of the lights hooked up to it. So uh, they're nice. They have all of the uh, light ups. So you know if they're on, you see if you're getting power to it. And it's got a standard, you know, just plugs on the back and makes it real simple and keeps all your wiring behind here and keeping this clean look. As I think clean wiring is really important, even if it's a home lab that you plan on changing a lot or our studio lab here, but we plan on, you know, changing configurations. Now, next down is this, this patch panel. And I have one that's out so you can get a better idea. And this is a modular patch panel as opposed to your standard where you punch down all the wires. Now, the reason we went modular, and these can be really handy for uh, doing this, is when you have a modular patch panel, you can just pop these in and out and change it around however you want. And they just come right out and you can put in a different module, a blank, fill them in however you want. And a couple of things that I have in this modular patch panel. The demo one is one standard keystone, like for standard when you punch down the wires, and then to keep it clean, you can tighten it up right here so the wires are nice and straight. Then I have a couple of these ones, which are just double-sided. So you can use a uh, patch cable on this side, and on the other side, you can just use another prefab patch cable. And the reason for some of those is some of these we did that way because like the way they have the cloud key sitting here, I had a patch cable and I wanted the patch cable to go around and back because it doesn't look good if it comes around here at the front or if we just, you know, ran it up and over this way. So putting those double-sided keystones on there uh, means I can still keep the wiring nice and neat and clean. And as you can see, I got some color coding I did here. Uh, I just bought a variety of colors. It's not really color coded, but we have done a lot of installs where we specifically will color them for the client that makes it a lot easier to choose uh, you know, which one is in there. And you can tell people, plug the red wire into the red and the blue into the blue. Uh, and I didn't get a lot of different color patch cables. We had one red, we had a bunch of black in stock, so I used them. But I'll leave links where you can get these little short patch cables. They come in different colors and you can you know, order the ones. And we've done this for, like I said, many clients where we match certain things. Maybe you want all the POE ones to be a certain color. Uh, and different networks to be different colors. It's handy to do that. Now, the other advantage of using a modular one is these keystones for things like HDMI. You can get keystones for a lot of different things. And we have a couple HDMIs because we're using them actually for part of the studio. And we were gonna put some of the other studio video equipment in here, and we still might, but it kind of makes all the cables uh, a little bit messier because they have to go somewhere and back around because I usually like to have this whole rack behind us when we're recording. But we have them in another modular rack where you actually plug in each of the cameras. So you can get, like I said, a variety of things. They're standard keystones and it makes it easy to take these in and out. Now the rest of the slots over here, we just filled with blanks. Uh, just aesthetic, to keep the aesthetic so everything's nice and clean and instead of having some holes in there. Now next down, we're just running a unified 24 port switch. Uh, POE, this makes it easy for us to power things off of here. So if I'm doing some of the demos, and that's what a lot of this build was for us to make it even easier to do some of the videos. But when we're doing a demo, I can quickly plug something in and power it. Matter of fact, this is powered off of the POE here. Uh, you know, different cameras, different things we're working on, be able to make it pretty simple. And then below here is a PF Sense. 
currently. It's just a 1U rack mounted, and I'll probably do a review specifically of this later, uh, but we had actually had a fan send us this, which is, uh, thank you very much. And it's handy because uh, we are planning on loading some different firewall software, so I wanted it right here. And then we used a series of VLANs, as I showed in my other video, uh, to give it LAN 1, LAN 2, and a WAN IP address, and then separate out the networks. But it makes it easy so I have something physical to demo things on for stuff I want to run you know, on real hardware, not always virtualized. But it's a one-use super micro server. Uh, maybe a separate review on that. Now, obviously, some think go on shelves. So we have this. This is just a shelf. And I have one. I don't want to take that one back out. That's just one of these shelves. And I'll leave a link where you can get all the parts I'm talking about uh, here, including this. You know, we get all this from Amazon for a pretty reasonable price. So this shelf is got two bolts on it. Uh, it's pretty sturdy in there. And someone's probably gonna point out the fact that I didn't put all the bolts in. And I didn't for some of these. I don't have anything too heavy on there and it wasn't a big deal to me. And I still, we think this is the configuration we'll keep it in. And it's kind of just laziness that I didn't put these in uh, with more bolts, but it's holding, it's stable, it's sturdy. Now, next thing down is this server we have sitting here. Now this server, whoops, knocked the light off. <laughs> this server is a uh, for you, I think it's a Rosewell, not Roswell case, I'm not positive, but the way you get these servers in here when you get a deal on a server and you didn't uh, get the right rails for it or they're a pain sometimes when you have custom cases or you get a deal when you're building your lab and you're like, oh, the rails are gone or the rails don't line up to the uh, rack I have properly. And that can always be a pain. And that's where these come in. These are some nave point. And the way they sit in here, they're just nave point rails. They're just, the server's sliding across here. They're well painted, well made, uh, adjustable size, so whatever length or whatever depth you have your rack set to, these will fit in there. Now I do really recommend when you do these, you put a couple bolts here and a couple bolts here. So you actually do bolt these in and you can kind of see down at the bottom, this does have all the screws in it. And what this allows you to do is uh, keep it from twisting because the one downside if you get ones that aren't solid all the way across is they twist in like this. So when they cock out a little bit uh, when you try to slide the server and it might hit this little rail so you want them to stay nice and tight so that doesn't happen. They do make, and I'll leave a link to them if you're interested, they make ones that go all the way back, uh, but they cost a lot more. These are relatively inexpensive and get a few of these in there and it's still easy to slide the servers in and out. And that's kind of something we're gonna be doing is swapping this out because I have several other boxes sitting over here uh, and I wanna do some more hardware demos and I have a couple of servers that might be coming in here and I wanna do reviews on. And this is a quick way to slide them in and out of the rack for, for making videos. So uh, these work really great. So that's pretty much it. It's not real in depth here, it's pretty basic, but the goal is, you know, clean cabling, easy to do, easy to uh, turn things on and off. Obviously there's a risk because there's no cover over this one, uh, that if this is within reach, as you know, people will poke at things and don't let your kids get by because they'll be like, oh, I can just turn things on and off, right? And that could obviously be bad. But from a lab standpoint, for me, be able just to plug some different things in and be able to uh, swap servers out real quick and have the power and access here, it's great. So I think it's a relatively inexpensive lab build. Never gonna beat the deals you're gonna find on, you know, uh, a used parts on Craigslist, but that comes with its own risk of dealing with people on Craigslist and hoping that they're not shady themselves and meeting in somewhere. Uh, I like buying things on Amazon and it just arrives and I can just do some assembly with all this. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.